What's going on, guys? It's Expo Jesse. Today on Teaching Tuesdays, we're going to go over Trading View and how to get a chart that looks like this to end up looking like this. So, without further ado, we'll get right into it. So, first things first, there's a bunch of different settings here that I don't like, one of them being the grid lines. Uh, and so, I have a preset. And here on the bottom left, you'll see that you can save a ton of different presets. So, for example, if I have Jay Will, he's a guy who uh, is in trades with me and, and he has a chart that makes you blind when you look at it. So I don't like using that one. I use the expo one and here's kind of my settings. I just have a blue background, no grid lines, 0%, I think 0% opacity. Uh, same candle uh, bodies. You can change these if you want to make them, you know, pink or purple or whatever you want, but that's kind of what I have my settings set to. I'll go through each of these and if you really want to, you can copy and have your chart look exactly like mine. This doesn't really matter. I don't trade on trading view, but if you do trade on trading view and you want to keep it hidden um, or show certain things like you want to show ticks instead of money, which is um, not a horrible idea at all, then you can change that there as well. But for as far as the chart, the background looking all pretty, that is what it'll look like. So the next thing we'll go over is the watch list here on the top or here on the right side. There's a ton of different little gadgets here. You have your watch list details and news. So I have mine hidden down here, but you can look at, you know, the technicals of what, what people are saying about NQ or, or if, you know, I switch this to Apple, it'll tell you, you know, what's the dividends and income statements and what analysts think if it's a strong sell, sell neutral buy, strong buy. And they'll go through there. I have this hidden. Um, I don't. I don't really care that much about all that stuff. Maybe showing earnings and previous earnings, just for if you're a long-term investor, is a good idea. But other than that, um, if you're not looking at news or news releases, then I just have it hidden down there. Next one is alerts. I have a ton of different alerts. You can manage them. You can remove all inactive, which. If, if they've been stopped or triggered, you can hit remove all inactive. Yes. And then they'll all go to just the active ones. Next one's your object tree. Next one is your heat map calendar. So this is a good idea. If you're looking at news, you don't have to go to Forex factory. I do. I end up going to Forex factory pretty much every day, but uh, this will show you red folder news and I'm sure you can, uh, you can filter out, you know, how heavy, if you want the orange folder news as well, uh, and things of that nature. My ideas, chats, ideas, streams, streams, notifications, I don't use any of those. So we'll go back to the watch list. I use that very frequently. What you can do is you can go here and make a copy of any list. You can add a section. So let's add a few symbols. Let's go Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, Meta, AMD, Nvidia, and Disney. So here's four symbols, or sorry, seven symbols. You can filter them to go A to Z in symbols. You can filter last, volume, and uh, and things of that nature. You can also add extended hours if you want to see that, or if you only want to see one thing, you can click these boxes. Like right now, I have it just set to last, but I do look at the change in the volume as well. Um, Logo is just kind of cool to look at, and other than that, it doesn't really can look at the name of it if you want to but I use the ticker you can rename this so if I want to go teaching Tuesday one nine can rename that as you can see I have a, a good amount of watch list here my go-to is my the one with my name on it and I've added a couple sections like uh, indices and futures what you can do is after you add the sections, then everything inside of that, you can just hit one button and close it. So if I don't want to see anything, I can keep it closed. But this is kind of the chart setup that I have here. So I have, let's go back here and delete this guy. Or no, maybe I'll do that later. I just saw it go away. So I have the indices, so SPY, Qs, Dow Jones, and the VIX. I have futures, ES, NQ, RTY, YM, RTY is Russell, YM is Dow. Then I have oil and gold, 
and then the Dixie. Then I have some Forex. I don't really watch this as much right now. Now that I'm trading mostly futures, but it's still good to have a have in my watch list here. Then I have ETFs, so things that I don't really watch all that much, but are still good to look at. The MAG7, so if I want to get a good feel of the S&P, this is what I'll look like. And uh, and later on when I show, show how to change tables and look at more than one chart inside of this big box here, I'll show you my MAG7 box here too. And then just different charts at the bottom. So that's the watch list. You can hit advanced view and then share your watch list with other people if you want or Google or Facebook or sorry, uh, Twitter or Facebook uh, and so on and so forth. So that is the watch list. We'll close that for now and head to the left side of the screen. Top is going to be your pointer. You can choose an arrow or a dot. I use a cross and uh, just kind of keeps if I want to look at a certain price in a certain time, I can do that. So I don't use anything except for those next box or next uh, gadget here. Trend lines and horizontal rays are all I use out of this. And if you see here, you can hit a star and that will favorite it. And then here at the bottom, you'll have a favorites bar. So these are the ones I mostly use day to day and, uh, and just keeps it for me having to look through all of these because you can see there's a ton of different things. You can just play around with this and kind of see, you know, I can put a smiley face here if I want to. Um, and, you know, it just keeps it less cluttered, I think. So here's a fib. You know, I just saw that real quick. Here's long position, short position, so on and so forth. So I use fibs. Fib retracement, I don't use extension that much anymore. Um, might in the future, but right now I don't. And then, like I said, trend line, horizontal ray. Next section, I don't use any of this. I know Elliott Wave Theory folks will use this a lot more than I do. Or uh, harmonics traders as well. Long position, short position, fixed volume profile. So here's my fixed volume profile. You could take it from a range. And it'll show you where uh, the point of control is. Next section is just a brush, a path, which is how I draw my arrows, and then a rectangle, which I do use a lot. Uh, and then here in the text, I use text and call out. And that's pretty much how I mark up my charts. Uh, and each of these have different functions. So like a long position, you can you can mess around with this top part. I don't trade on trading view, like I said, <clears throat> so I don't use it. But let's say that I want a 20 tick stop. I can do that. And a, or sorry, that's a profit and a 20 tick stop. So it'll do 20 point or 20 cents and 20 cents. Kind of an easy way to do that. So that covers the left side. Here at the top, you'll see the ticker. You'll see the ability to add or compare symbols. So if I want to compare ES to Apple, show how closely they're coordinated. I'll change my style here from a line to a candle. And a lot of this honestly is just time and practice with the chart in looking at it. So if I look at Apple, so what I did right there is I right clicked, then you have a ton of settings, you can add an alert. So if I want to set an alert here, when it is making a new low, I can do that, hit add alert, you can send it to a webhook, you can email it to yourself, you can send an email to a text to yourself, you can notify in the app and write a message all in this box here. But mostly I use right click and then reset chart. So you can see ES compared to Apple moves very, very similarly, right? So that is what this plus button does. A lot of times what I'll do is if I'm looking like at an, this NQ chart and I want to see how Dixie's moving with it, because usually it moves inverse, then I will do that here. So change this to a candle and I can see, okay, I, I want to be long. Dixie's starting to go short. I like that go back to focusing on one thing and that is that one there let's go back to this close that top part you have your time frames you can hit this drop down arrow and favorite your favorite time frames and then that way you're able to see just the ones that you care about like I don't look at the, the yearly chart very much but I do look at the month day week especially when I'm swing trading options and uh, and then these are my go-tos 
I've used the the three and the six minute chart mostly to see if uh, there's fair value gaps that I'm not seeing on my my time frames are here one five fifteen and if I'm not seeing a fair value gap but I saw that price rejected then I'll look to the the three or six minute and see okay maybe on these time frames it did have a fair value gap uh, and so those are the time frames up here you can just right or left click and cycle through them real quick next one's going to be your candle bodies and the types i use just the normal candles some people use hollow candles some people use bars or heiken ashi or renko um, i do not so that is that for me then here's the indicator section so pretty important section to know what you can do is you can search up any indicator that you want to. So if I want to look up exponential moving average, then I can do that. And then you can hit the favorite button here and then it'll show up in your favorites next time that you're looking for it. And it goes like, where's it right there. So then I can left click and add an uh, EMA to my chart. These are the ones I have. If you really want to copy every indicator that I have used or, or do use some of these are, I think like this one's private bought this several years ago uh, it's a harmonics indicator uh, and if you don't know what that is then don't worry about it it uh, gets complicated but these are all the indicators that I use or have used in the past mostly what I chart on I'll show you all that on uh, when I go after this top bar here so then these indicators after you have a set you can hit this little grid box here and save indicator template and then hit save. And then if you go back to templates and hit the star, it'll show up right up here. So then I can look up Teaching Tuesdays, looks like that. E is my everyday chart, which has Expo Toolkit, Breakage Structure, slash Change of Character from Nephew Sam, 14 EMA, a VWAP, and the Strat Highs and Lows. This is what I chart on and look at every single day. And that's a template. But if I wanna go to a four EMA, I have that option. This is a four SMA daily chart, so it's not gonna look very good on the five minute chart, but that's a daily chart. These are overnights, which is just more EMAs. These are Bollinger Bands by Paper Gains. This is Smart Money Indicators Swing Trading, which is just usually more EMAs and Strat. Then out of Strat plus Bollinger Bands, and then I usually don't trade with volume, so I'm not sure why that is even on there, but we'll go there. And that is the top section. Nothing really to see on the bottom section. Bottom right, you can see your uh, time zone. I'm in the Eastern, so I go with New York. And that's that. This bottom left one by the time intervals is the calendar. So if you're back testing or if you just want to see a different date like September 21st, then it will show you what day was September 21st right there. Alrighty, so let's make this box into more than one box. So you go up here on the right, you can save templates as well, or loadouts. Here's some more chart settings. You can take a picture up here. So if I wanna copy an image, I can do that. Well, I can't post an image of TradingView on TradingView. You can copy a link or tweet it. Uh, other than that, nothing big here, but this is gonna be the big one. So that when you're setting up your chart, and let's say that you want to look at two time frames. You can go here to the two. And some of these features will be premium, but we'll go as if you already have premium. So if I want to look at Apple on the daily and the weekly, I'll need to make sure that I have the same symbol, not the same interval. Crosshair doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter. Date range doesn't matter. But, and then you go, you click on one side of the box, make it a day, click on the other, make it the week. Now it already did that for me. So let's say I want to make it the month. Click on that box, make it the month. Click on this box, make it the week. Let's say that you want to look at four boxes. In this one, you want to have the 15 minute time frame. You can also type on your on your keypad. And there I did 15. I just typed 15 and did 15 minute. I can type one D and it'll change it to one day. I can type one week and change it to the week. And one M changes it to one month. 
And so here I'm able to look at all four quadrants and see, okay, here's what the daily candle looks like here at the top right, the weekly, here's what it looks like, the monthly, here's what it looks like, so on and so forth. This is really good when you're looking, if you're trading strat and looking at high time frame comp, um, higher time frame continuity, then it's good to look at that without having to divide your chart or, you know, go from here at the bottom. You can also hit the maximize chart, but instead of you going like, okay, what's the hour look like? What's the day look like? Week, month, etc. So it's a lot easier. Now, obviously you can get information overload if you go to something like a 16 by channel, which apparently I don't even have access to, or maybe I do. I don't know. I didn't read that, but, uh, this can be information overload for sure. If you're not careful. So I do the eight by is my max. Here's what I look at for my options. So I use mostly Bollinger bands on my options and, uh, and then strat as well. So I'll have, this is the mag seven or most of the mag seven minus Google, and then ES and NQ. Here's my daily. I have it split into three. I have the one, five and 15 all set up. And then I have two other tabs. So in the trading view app, this is all on the trading view app. You can also use the website if you want to, but I use the app in the app. If you right click a tab, you can pair it with, uh, another tab. So, or group it. So here on NQ, I have a quadrant of all four of the, of the features. So if I click on ES and change it on this to focus on ES, then these other three quadrants or other three tabs will also change to be focused on ES. It's really nice for when I'm looking at, you know, I just want to see a five minute look and then I'm like, okay, there's a inside bar set up on oil. Let me look at what it looks like on the one and the 15. And then let me look at what it looks like on the day, week, month. Really nice there. Other than that, uh, here's my other chart with the kind of the alt options that I'll look at, but this is kind of my main, these five tabs are my main go-tos for sure. Um, this is my Forex one, 15 hour, four hour and day. These are usually overnights, I think, where I look at the day and the week. Here's a new one I just set up which is looking at ES and NQ at the same time to look at divergences. I actually used that a little bit today just to see how, you know, if, if NQ breaks out, but ES is struggling, then I can, I know to be a little bit more cautious, but if both of them are going in the same direction at the same time, I know that it's a probably a high probability trade. All righty. And then here's another random one that I just have set up and should pretty much do it. So that is how I have trading view set up and yeah, thanks for coming out and I'll see you guys next week.